Okay. So how do you pronounce your name, first of all? So I go by Joss. Joss, okay, cool. Um, but it stems from Jocelyn. Okay, right on. Yeah, so everyone gets kind of confused. Like, they, they understand Jocelyn, but then they'll immediately try to call me Josie or, or Jos. <laughs> right, yeah. It's okay. For some people that's stuck, and I'll answer to pretty much anything as long as I'm paying attention because... I mean, usually I'm all over the place and not paying attention to this point. <laughs> if, if people say a name with enough confidence, you kind of just look over thinking that they're talking to you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, basically. And I don't, I don't always have the heart to change people's, I guess, perception of my name, but it, it's what it is. As long yeah. as they're nice, I don't usually care. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's take it back. Where did you start? How long ago did how, how long have you been riding? So I am 29 now, and I picked up a BMX bike when I was 25. Okay, cool. So about four years now, yeah, um, which is crazy because it feels like it's been super fast and also not like barely any time at all. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it, I had already known how to ride a bike, and I needed something a little scary. So yeah. <laughs> after searching through a bunch of things and trying different stuff and, you know, uh, being as adrenaline addicted as I was with cheerleading, which sounds so funny, but I mean, I was a tumbler, so I was so used to landing on my head. It is what it is. Like, that's what I looked for. I needed that. Like, I tried it. I ate a lot of shit. I got back up, then I got it feeling. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of like led me into BMX because it was easy. It was there. My uncle did it when he was little, and I kind of like was sort of had a little bit of taste of that like not not much to really get, catch me but it was kind of like an easy option to do something that felt like I was moving but also could progress on my own right. um, and I started racing because it was something that I could do every week too and I was like I was used to having cheerleading practices I had them two nights a week and sometimes more in some occasions when I was on multiple teams wow. so having like the racetrack be pretty close to my house and having a reason to go to practice and then having a re like a re like a thing that I was practicing for um, was pretty rad because it all kind of came together and there was like a reason for what I was doing with a goal. Mm -hmm. um, and then it kind of like stemmed from everywhere else or from everything else. Like little by little, people would show me new things and Grom Dad kind of is the blame for that. Or he's <laughs> like, no, no, a whole other side of BMX and you need to try this. I was like, oh, oh whatever. I'll try anything once. <laughs> <laughs> so Grom Dad was the one that kind of pushed you in that direction a little bit. Yeah, and then it's funny because I have like a, a whole Connecticut crew that I kind of started hanging with who opened my eyes just so like, I guess, BMX in that area in general and then kind of connected with some people that I knew from high school mm -hmm. and they were riding, but they didn't, weren't racing. But when it, it's kind of like a blur at this point, but once I was racing, I had them and then I had them to practice with on the side and we... we meet up at the skate park sometimes and I'd you know eat shit on my bike that like wasn't meant for racing or really riding it was like more of like a hang on the wall because it was pretty bike <laughs> uh, which it got me started I can't complain about that yeah, um gosh. but then once I met Grom Dad he kind of like oh no there's more and the first thing he brought me to that was like way out of the loop was uh the rebel run in the city they call it the grands but here I am, like, totally naive. I'm, like, thinking we're going to a racetrack in New York City. Yeah. I didn't know. I <laughs> didn't know that didn't exist. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we show up, and I'm like, yo, where's this track? And he's like, what? And I'm like, where's this track? And he's like, we're not going to a racetrack, idiot. Like, we're going to do the Grands. And I'm like, okay, whatever. I guess open-minded is. And they lined us all up at us, like, a crosswalk. And... I don't even remember. It was like such a blur. I had my GoPro and I looked like a total noob. Like I had the whole like gloves, a helmet, like, you know, <laughs> and I don't even remember if someone like yelled go or if there was like a little air horn or I don't know. But all of a sudden it was like a battle for the whole shot. And I was like, this is, this is gnarly. Like we're in the middle of the road. There's cars beeping at us because we have, we've stopped traffic completely. Wow. Like, we all just had to start riding, and then we had to go, like, from point A to point B to point C to the next point, and then back to finish, and I think I got absolutely last, but I was the only girl riding in it, and, like, that was pretty rad, because I guess no girls do that. I don't know why. It's cool, but it was also terrifying at the same time. Like, 
you learn real fast how to hop curbs and not get hit by people on delivery bicycles and you know (laughs) (laughs) how to how to not die in traffic (laughs) you know (laughs) kind of gnarly but yeah it it was it's kind of like a here's this and also there's more but let's start with this and it just kind of kept going yeah, I'm in the middle of a podcast, and there was like a tornado around me. Yeah, right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So what happens is, is they uh, they go, they all like meet up in the backyard to dig because we have a couple lines that are getting set up now. In your yard. Like, yeah, it's pretty rad. We're in Long Island, so it's like kind of hidden and cool, but um, cool. They're digging a bunch of different lines, and they kind of just like bring over their dogs whenever and no one lets me know <laughs> yeah. right. so then mine go nuts but anyway um but yeah he kind of like introduced me to uh to the other side of like racing like official racing and I kind of fell in love with it because it's so unpredictable and it's so crazy and everyone's in a good mood and there's good vibes but it's still kind of competitive but it doesn't really have to be Mm-hmm. So from then on, I was like, "This is this is for me." Like, what's next? Let's go. <laughs> Damn, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so, I I had I got tipped off to you from Tasha. She's the one I asked her, "Who should I interview next?" She told me you, and I didn't connect the dots right away until I was like looking on your Instagram or something, and I was like, "Oh shit, this is the girl that did the fucking backflip at Swamp Fest." <laughs> what? So, I mean, there's a lot to be said there. Like, not, not, I'd say majority of, majority of bike riders wouldn't pull that. So where, where did this kind of like a headstrong kind of motivation come from? Um, well, first of all, I love Tasha. It totally doesn't surprise me that she told you to chase after me. <laughs> she also told you that I'm like a space cadet and really hard to reach because I'm doing a thousand things. <laughs> Hopefully she told you that part. But um, so to be honest with you, that weekend was like, all right, I'm a, I'm a go-getter. I like challenges. I like scary, not like haunted movies scary because that makes me not sleep at night. But I like, right. like, hair on the back of your neck standing up because you're about to do something gnarly and like you can do it but you don't know you can do it yet Mm -hmm. those are my favorite feelings um but i was kind of like full blown into this bmx life and learning all like the cool things that you can do and different types of riding and places of riding and the people that come with it and i was like completely like in love with it so on the flip side of this, I was struggling with some things. Uh, I had some family issues going down. Mm-hmm. Um, my parents had just like started initiating a divorce, which you know, when you're older, that's a little gnarly to go through because you have a perception of how things are, and then that changes. Um, that was how it was in my case, but yeah. it's okay. It's all good now. Whatever, as long as they're happy. But anyways, I was going through like that. And then I had just found a job, a teaching job that was really not quite what I thought and expected it to be. Mm -hmm. And I am, I don't even know if this is a word, I'm an internalizer. (laughs) I tend to hold things in because I'm not great at communicating. So I, when I do let them out, often they're confusing and people don't always take it seriously. They see the Joss who's like constantly smiling and throwing herself off cliffs and things like that. So my emotions often come out in, I don't know how much I'm allowed to swear. I've already been swearing like crazy. You swear I think. as much as you but want in this. My emotions come off in what I like to call fuck it weekends. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I don't go on a bender of drinking. I'm not doing drugs. I've never done drugs. Like it's, it's just me like, you know what? I'm going to push my body to its limit. I don't really care what happens. I kind of need to just tunnel vision. It's something that feels good. And with the school thing happening where I wasn't happy, I didn't feel like I was like the school goals didn't align with my morals for how I wanted, like, like, what what were you teaching? Phys ed. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I, and I, and I knew I didn't find my dream job. It was a stepping stone job, but Mm -hmm. I was just so turned off by how the school handled things for the kids and the staff and, 
it was just a lot going on there that I was just like, this is scary and, and I'm good. And I ended up having to quit my job for Swamp Fest because I wasn't really going to get time. Mm. It just was odd. But anyways, like I said, I went into this tunnel vision of like, I'm going to ride something there. I don't care what it is. I'm going to figure it out. And the year before, I learned how to wall ride. Oh, cool. Which was so cool because I had just started. I'd never wall ridden before. I didn't know how to do it. Someone was just like, all right, well, you got to just ride really fast at this wall and just like try to move your your wheel to just get up there. And I'm like, I don't get it, but okay, let's do it. Yeah. And I ate so much shit that time, but I had so much fun. So I was like, you know what? I'm not leaving this Swamp Fest without something. And I get there and I actually kind of had your like typical dramatic girl moment where I was like, I can't ride anything here. Hmm. Like I can't even, I can't even like visualize myself jumping off of the storage unit drop in because I don't know how to go off of something and then land over here when there's a gap here yeah I like wasn't there yet so I was a little little moody I was bummed (laughs) I'm like I I know right (laughs) which is funny because like I I I tend to forget people have emotions in bikes because they're like superhumans Hmm. but I think people kind of assume that I don't have emotions in bikes sometimes until they see me like go through something and I was like so upset and I'm like I'm not gonna ride anything here like this sucks everyone's having a good time I can't just sit here and have a good time like I need to be physically moving because my body needs it like or I'm gonna drive myself nuts yeah and I don't even know if someone pointed out the loop at first but I was like well that's like scary as shit watching people hit it whatever and then I, I think I oh I busted open my shit like the tiniest little bit on like the little dirt bumps that they made for the kids to play on I'm like, I came all the way to Swamp Fest and I just like blasted open my shin like like a pinhole that won't stop bleeding on like, and, it, and it, they, the, the dirt, the jumps weren't even jumps anymore. They were like sand hills because the kids had ridden them in so hard. Uh, they, they were just kind of like, they just, it, they didn't last. Right. I'm like, I came all the way to Swamp Fest, had big goals and I'm blasting my shin open on like sand boxes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and then a couple of people, I don't know what happened, but a couple of people messaged me and um, Mike from Cisco from Tony's Bikes is one of them. One of them who has always been like, like another, like, I guess dad figure there. I had a whole bunch of like BMX dads <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, you know, like if you do this, like that'd be pretty rad. And I'm like, all right, let me think about it. I don't know. Let me see what else I can do. You know, wander around a bit more of a social butterfly. And then someone else said something, and I was like, you know what? I'm here. Home isn't great right now. I'm going to make it happen. Why not? Let's do it. So the first time, I, like, totally was out of out of line. Didn't make any sense. Second time, I knocked the wind out of myself. Um, but I was actually laughing because I, like, had really short shorts on. That's just how I ride. I kind of ride in what I feel like it. Yeah. But I really put shorts on and I had to like I was like choking laughing because I had no wind left into me, but I'm like trying to make sure my shorts, like everything's in the right place. So I'm like not flashing anybody. So I took a break for a bit and then after that I was like, you know what, I got kinda gotta bang this thing out and just kept trying at it until I got it and it was it was the raddest feeling. <laughs> <laughs> so it you, was really cool. <laughs> so you could you kinda once you started trying it and and eating shit you started seeing the completion you could see it in your head after you started going after it little bits i mean it was more of like a tunnel vision like i kind of have to just keep going until i physically fall apart <laughs> yeah uh, so that i can hide that i'm actually falling apart <laughs> <laughs> i've been in you those know. same mind frames for like a fucking manual pad manual 180s so i know what you mean <laughs> You're like, you know what? If I get hurt doing this, like, no one's gonna know I'm actually crying inside. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> no one will question it. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, uh, little by little, yeah. But it was pretty cool because the people who were helping me, like, like our friend Aaron, uh, Simone, he was like, listen, you just gotta put your wheels here. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, yeah. So you need enough speed and just don't fail. Like, just commit. And I remember, like, yeah, little by little, it started to come together. <laughs> but it wasn't that, like, second to last time right before I got it that it was, like, okay. Like, this is this is what it's supposed to feel like. Like, I'm not just, uh, like, flailing flying out of the air now. Like, this is 
all right, we're getting somewhere, right? Yeah. And then the next time it was just like, I just had to hold on. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it was really rad. It was the coolest feeling. It's probably <laughs> the coolest thing I've done so far. <laughs> Hell yeah. I would have probably lost my voice screaming after that, just being so excited. Like, oh my God. <laughs> it was pretty rad. Like, there, like little by little, I think people started to recognize what was happening. And like, then there was like a crowd around me, which was pretty rad. But I think my favorite part of that whole entire thing was like, after I, after I got out of it, and I think I, I like rode out sitting down too. Like it just like forced me to sit and I just kept going like that way. Yeah. But some dude, <laughs> I don't know who it was. I wish I knew. I probably, I'm probably friends with him and just have no clue this is who it was because I was still learning everybody at the time. But some dude like came over and scooped me in like the biggest like monster hug. And I, I like, <laughs> like I said, like I, it was like a hug and like run. I had no idea who it was, but it was like, this dude's just like come here I'm like okay <laughs> it was it was really cool and like having my friends there to watch it was really rad and uh my boyfriend taking the photos was even cooler because like i i like i have that to hold on to now yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's good stuff <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> your boyfriend's johnny nemechek right Nemesek. Nemesek? Yep, Nemesek. Right. cool yeah, I've mm-hmm. seen a couple of his pictures. Some sick shit. Yeah, he does some cool stuff. He's gnarly, but his actually his frame broke that day. Oh shit! Um, otherwise he probably would have still been drop riding the dirt jumps, but he actually, like he he ate complete shit. So I said, well, I guess I'm taking photos now. So it was perfect though. But uh, yeah, yeah, no, it was it was kind of kind of wild. <laughs> wow. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Holy fuck! So what's uh what's happening since then? What what have you been up to since the since the backflip? Um, making a lot of friends. I got to travel to Texas with uh, a bunch of new people and like a bunch of friends that I already had. Mm-hmm. Just kind of like climbing up and up and trying to make new cool experiences happen and like further my progression. I still can't manual. I need to learn that. I don't have the <laughs> learn <laughs> say that again i don't have the patience to learn like oh, right. i really should like settle down and try that but i just that's just i'm i'm joss i don't slow down <laughs> and then uh i also and this is so embarrassing but i can't bunny hop right <laughs> oh wow so you gotta like work on your mechanics i have to go backwards to all the basics because i never really learned it i'm like I kind of just like to throw everything and see what happens. And I probably would be much better off at riding if I knew the small things that helped me get the control to get where I need to be. <laughs> Holy shit. That just makes that backflip even crazier, you know? <laughs> yeah, it kind of doesn't make any sense. But I also had a cheerleading background, and I tumbled. Yeah. So I kind of, like, I mean, aside from bailing off of the bike, like, and, not, and trying not to land on that, like, I kind of had the like you don't learn until you throw it feeling mm-hmm. and i mean it i used to do some really cool flips and the only way to learn it is either you're gonna have someone stand next to you and spot you and give you this like false feeling of what it should feel like or you kind of just got to keep ripping it until you figure it out and eventually after enough times on your head your body's like i don't like this let me try a different way and yeah kind of figure it out <laughs> <laughs> So it's like a little bit of like a uh, spatial awareness on top kind of thing. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Very much so. Although I do notice that a lot of my thing, like I've, I've been trying to learn like threes, um, like small fly out threes, you know, stuff like that. But I'm seeing a lot of my gymnastics, bad habits carry through to my BMX bad habits. Oh really? <laughs> like what? Like not following through on a full twist. So oh. When you learn something called a full, which is, so it's a rotation and a backflip at the same time. So it's a 360 back. If you don't look with your head, mm-hmm. body and your head and everything else are going to rotate at weird times and it's going to throw you off and you're going to fall out of the sky. And that's literally exactly what's happening when I try to learn threes. Oh, I don't shit. look where I'm going. <laughs> yeah. I, uh... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I struggle with like flat bunny hop threes. Like if I do one every session and I ride like three times a week, I'll have like this dialed bunny hop three. 
but recently I haven't been riding that much and I haven't been doing that kind of shit that much. And I'll go to do a three and it's like the oh, most no. fucked up, scary feeling. <laughs> like, like I just like in the middle of it all, like my, my feet come off and my front tire bounces off the ground. And I just like, I look around like, did anybody just see that? I should probably not do that. Like I just get so out of uh, sync with it. You know, it's such a tricky maneuver. I give you guys a lot of credit. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't quite make sense to me, to be honest, like how how to pull off of flat ground and do that. I try to do it. We were at. um, Oh, my God, we were in Massachusetts at some college. I can't remember where it was, but the boys were riding a fountain. I can't hop into the fountain yet. So I'm like, okay, I'll go mess around in the grass. They watched me completely lay myself out in frozen grass and like. I don't even know, it was like February or some brutal time of the year when it's like, you shouldn't be outside in, in Massachusetts, right? Totally lay myself out in the grass because I didn't know how to turn and I just tried to pull a three <laughs> out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, I had no plans. It just was like, <laughs> jaws up, bike up, everything hits the ground. <laughs> Do you mess with uh, like bump jumps at all? A little bit, yeah. I mean, I, I got to go back to all, like I said, I got to go back to the basics. I just... yeah. Way too ADHD to sit on them. <laughs> I feel like bump jumps are like a good like. It helps you, f- especially even if I haven't ridden in a while. I'll, I'll go to the bump jump because like I I don't have much to yank up. It's like it doesn't feel good like bunny hop from flat, but if I have yeah. a bump jump there, it's like it's like Super Mario. If I just compress and hit this, yeah. I'm gonna get. I'm not even gonna try. It. I'm gonna get in some air. So I like yeah, that. Yeah. But damn, I gotta set that up then. We got some we got some curbs and, and things around here, some DIY spots I can go play at. Sounds like you have a you have a pump track getting installed in the backyard too. Uh eventually, yeah. We're gonna build the lines first and then oh. like, like sneak a pump track through it. Yeah. Okay, cool. So it's so it's jumps first. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. We have a we have a pretty rad setup. It's all behind the garage, so you can't really see it. And then we have a storage container as a roll in and I think right now there's like three lines that are set up um, and the guys are working on them right now, but I'm probably going to get shit for not helping, but, <laughs> <laughs> but so <don't> tell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I'll get a knock from the, the dry guys committee. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> we heard what you said, Joss. <laughs> um, but what's going to happen is like, we have those like three ish lines set up right now. And then, um, eventually i think he wants like four four or five lines if if possible um and kind of like weave everything through as far as the pump track goes so that like we can have a jam and everyone can come play that's really that's sick do you guys have to worry about neighbors or anything uh one neighbor next to us is a cop he's pretty cool he doesn't care as long as obviously we're like good yeah <laughs> i mean i don't really think he cares in general to be honest but we're not going to push any limits there Right. And then we've got another guy who's um, an older gentleman, but he, like, fires up a race car every now and then, and his truck is, like, the loudest thing on the block, so I think we're okay. <laughs> nice. That's what's up. Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, it's not, it's not like, we don't have, like, woods woods, per se, mm-hmm. but we're not on top of everybody, so. Yeah. It's helpful, for sure. Yeah, we got a, we got a house with a yard, and I was all excited about it, because, like, as soon as I saw the yard, I'm picturing a pump track or something like I don't need anything gnarly because I'm not that good at jumping at all but I'd like to work on it and have like a pump track you know but yeah. um, we saw the house when there was snow on the ground and we committed to it and uh, the ground is is just basically sand like unforgiving sand black sand no where are you again? I'm in Albany but that specific oh, okay. spot I'm at um for some reason there's sand there and uh i've already gone off the deep end and like searched how to get clay delivered and this that and the third i looked up how do you can um you can turn your soil from sand into like more hardy soil if you like let certain vegetation grow for years and years but it's like yeah i'm not trying to take a decade to turn this dirt into clay before i jump but i i also don't want clay to be delivered and then like see somebody case something and be so precious about the dirt like oh man my dirt's gonna you know so uh, that's something to consider down the road so that's really sick that you guys have that shit yeah and i think one thing that helped us a lot and i i don't know if this would help you or not because it is you do have some sand but 
We had people who were digging pools out, mm-hmm. drop up the dirt at our house because they had to pay to get rid of the dirt. So why not give it to us? Yeah, I think so that's the move. Some of that. Um, and I mean, we're on Long Island, so we have some sandy dirt kind of thing going, but this helped quite a bit. I bet, yeah. I mean, and I, I mean, I'll have to, I'll have to ask Johnny about some of his, his dirt secrets, but uh, <laughs> once I, once I figure out that info, I'll shoot it your way. But I know you use something specific to find out where the dirt is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. I thought about DMing uh, Dave Dave King about it. Do like, it. Maybe he knows something, but I don't know. Why not? Something. I need I need something. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, blame you. Can't ride the suburbs around the driveway all the time. No, I mean that's fun, but like it's nice to have like a mix above everything else too. Yeah, and and I've I've grinded shit my whole life. It's I've always wanted to be good at jumping, but it was never what I was good at. It was like grinding just came easier. So I, I'd mm-hmm. rather you know it takes less work to to jump and less impact. So it's kind of like let's get this going. Let's. Let's improve these skills. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that so wild? I, I always think about that. Like, where you started riding is, like, where you kind of, like, find a home in. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I I, I think my heart is in dirt jumping, to be honest, because I just, I love it. But I am really bad at street. Like, real bad at it. <laughs> I'd like to get better at it. I just don't ride enough of it. But I also, it's, it's also, I think you guys have, it's a lot more, like, patience and stuff that you have to have to learn those things because it's it's quicker, harder movements than like flowy. What gnarly injuries have you had? I know you, you had something happen with your knee recently, I guess. Is that the only thing? Yeah. So I um Jesus Christ, high sugar. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Okay. You guys are killing me. <laughs> I can't. I have ADHD. I can't focus. <laughs> okay. Injuries. Yeah. So I broke my shoulder a couple of jams back. That took me out for a bit, which kind of sucked. Um, and uh, I mean, I've had like your average, like, I think I broke my ankle at the Richmond jam. Mm. It, 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 figured itself out I think it was just a really like gnarly sprain and then I had um what else did I do did you have to get I surgery on your lucky. shoulder what did you have to get surgery on your shoulder no and actually the doctor told me that he probably shouldn't do surgery like to put in a plate because if I ever fell on it again um I would be more injured than if I didn't have metal. So it's Mm -hmm. actually, I have what's called a floating collarbone and it's not attached. So yeah, if I do like push-ups, you can see it like really, like it's, it's, yeah, it's pretty, it's not like, so a lot of people have it like here, Mm -hmm. like right to this spot, but I was, I mean, lucky, I crunched the end of mine. So I guess it's just the way that I felt. It just like ripped the, the top half off. But oh, wow. uh, mine doesn't stick out per se, like a protruding collarbone. Mine is more like the end of it. But you can feel like a bit, like a, it, you can see the hole mm-hmm. where the bones don't come back together. Um, he said I'm fine. He said that if I wasn't, if I didn't have as much muscle tone as I did, that I probably would have been fucked. Wow. <laughs> yeah, but I've been p- pretty good about like staying. I guess toned enough to where my my body isn't complete mush when I when I fall, but hmm. I mean it still sucked. It took me out for a bit, and to have to wear a sling and like not have anything else happen. It's not like I went through surgery and like yeah had a reason I was wearing the sling. It was just like you're not supposed to move this. But I I didn't know I broke it. I think apparently everyone else did, but I'm in denial because I have a really strange pain tolerance. It's more of like a selective thing where, you know, like I am petrified of doctors. So if I don't have to go, I don't, I don't want to yeah, go. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm good. <laughs> I would rather break it than, than, you know, get it fixed sometimes. Cause that's just more, it's like long and painful. But, um, I, I was lifting cases, um, for my job. I, I work for monster 
but I was like lifting cases and I didn't know it was broken. You know, like it hurt. It was kind of achy. Uh-huh. It wasn't wasn't bad. It was like I don't even know. It was like this is like going to be the stupidest example, but it's like having a headache in your muscle. Right. It's just like all and constant. Mm-hmm. And then the only reason that I really knew something was wrong was when I looked at my shoulder one day and I had like this this like gnarly line that kind of went across and it was just green from there down. Green. Yeah. It was like a weird, funky bruise color, you know, and bruises are trying to heal, but wow. there's clearly something wrong, yeah. But, I mean, I guess now, because I'm getting, like, edgier with the things I'm doing, things are catching up to me quicker, so, like, Richmond, I just came up a little too short, should have hmm. been fine, didn't pedal hard enough. I never pedaled at anything as big as the Richmond jump, it was 27 feet. Yeah. <laughs> you tried to send a 27 footer? Yeah. I was like, there's no way I'm not trying this shit. Like, this looks so much fun. Oh. I just didn't know how to go at it. And I, like, I thought I was pedaling my face off, but I wasn't. And my sprocket, I guess, was a little smaller than I probably needed it for it to help me get over it. But I had tried, um, I don't even know the, the length of the jumps in the, in the woods out here that we ride, but there's a big boy like real big boy and I tried that one and and made it but like eight shit down the back side of it but I was like I had a goal like last summer that I was trying this or else mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh I tried it that's all I wanted and then when I got to Richmond I was like oh yeah I'm trying this like I feel like it can land this thing and I just didn't have enough and the very last time I tried it four times the very last time um, I just caught my ankle the wrong way where, you know, when you like land and it kind of comes too far. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, I had broken them cheerleading like that. So I kind of knew that was like the point to stop. Um, so it was whatever, but it was still sick. It was a good time. Made a lot of cool friends that day. Um, but this, this knee thing that's happening right now, I'm pretty positive I need surgery. Uh, I, this was like the stupidest thing. It wasn't even anything exciting too, which makes me even more frustrated. We were just riding at a skate park and I went to go just roll up a bank to turn around to face the other way. Not going fast, nothing. It just like put my foot down the right wrong way and oh. after I turned my wheels and I felt everything pop. So I was like, oh, that's rad. Okay, well now, now what? But in... I had already torn my ACL meniscus on my other leg when I was cheerleading, but I didn't know I did it. Mm -hmm. I knew that like something felt funky. It felt like my knee like popped out of place and came back in. I could walk. I did the whole routine afterwards. Um, The only reason I knew something was wrong was when I went to catch a girl in what's called a basket toss. And thankfully I had two dudes that were my, my, my base mates, um, threw her up in the air, caught her and, just the way she landed, landed perfectly over the leg that was busted. And uh, I just fell, like I gave out and I'm like sitting there. I'm like, okay, well, do I move? Do I not move? It doesn't hurt. It's just, I apparently can't stand too much. And like I tumbled and everything before that, I just favored that leg. Like I like, like would tumble on one leg. Yeah. Um, and I didn't feel anything weird, so because that felt like I, it, it felt like the opposite of what they told me an ACL meniscus was, like how it felt when it got gets torn. This one, the other day, I was like, well, <laughs> either I'm like really fucked or it's the opposite and I'm okay. Um, but this past week I was at the Sea Otter Classic and I kind of, I took it easy for the week, let it rest, ice, you know, the whole deal. Mm-hmm. Um, this past week I was at the Sea Otter Classic, went to go like just, stand over a bike for a photo for somebody and my knee just totally popped out and everybody watched it pop out mm. i'm like oh okay so this one this time it hurt i'm like well that sucks whatever walk it off and then i go to <laughs> i go to you know bowling with some new friends that i made right because you're in california you might as well have a good time and i was going to catch an Uber back to my hotel. So I didn't know this dude was a pro mountain biker, which is pretty wild. He's like, you're not standing out here in the middle of nowhere by yourself. Like we're bringing you home. So he throws me in the truck with everybody else. But as I go to get in the truck 
totally pops out no. and like to the point where it like never came back into place uh. so i'm sitting there and i'm like i don't know what a dislocated knee feels like my kneecap is in the same place like that feels fine but everything else inside feels like gnarly right now so uh. i'm like sitting there talking to them like trying to jack my knee back in place like not sure what i'm doing they're looking at me like horrified like this girl is ridiculous it's like horrible first impression but they brought me home to the hotel and i just kind of laid there and I'm like this might be the one that takes me out for a bit <laughs> so I haven't had it checked out yet I have to wait till November um but Swamp Fest is coming and I don't know what's gonna happen there because <laughs> I, need it. I need it <laughs> damn I don't know we'll see what happens but yeah so this one this one's a doozy I can't walk well but I can walk so Aye, aye. Not even a good injury, or not even not not a good injury, but not even like a good story either. Which is like you couldn't have at least like let me like do something cool. So <laughs> I would just like just literally put my foot down the wrong right way on a bank. Yeah. Not even doing a trick, just turning around. <laughs> I don't know. That's Crazy. Like, that's like the Wait, fourth or fifth it? time I've heard that. Go ahead. I'm sorry. What? What'd you say? I said that's like the fourth or fifth time I've heard about somebody messing up their knee without doing anything substantial at all but like yeah, just the I, way they twist yeah and I, like my wheels didn't even leave the bank like i wasn't uh, jumping to turn i was just i rolled up it that's hella scary yeah and it's not like you took you had taken a bunch of time off and then got back on expecting your body to be the same that would be almost more understandable but mm -hmm. instead it was just regular old session just bad movements yep wow yep yep <clears throat> so i'm nervous we'll see what happens i'm uh i don't know i have a brace for the other side i know it's not going to fit this side but i'm oh really they're expensive yeah they're they're the osser osser i think that's how you say it those they're expensive so i'm like looking in to see if like i don't know i can figure out a way to to buy one without having to like spend my life to get one just so i can rip my leg off again for <laughs> swamp fest <Yeah. laughs> I don't know either that or I'm going to behave but that's really really difficult but mm -hmm. we'll see what happens <laughs> Damn. yeah so you, you you mentioned uh with your shoulder staying toned and, and shit like that it is um do you do like uh workouts and yoga and shit like that outside of bike riding is that like part of your regimen um yeah i actually have a fitness trainer his name is evan um he has a really awesome program and he is a like more of a movement trainer too so he knows his athletes um so i've been working with him a lot um i love it and i hate it because it forces me to do movements that i wouldn't necessarily do like outside of your squatting you know your your curls your regular stuff mm -hmm. um I would like to get more into yoga, and I think a lot of the reason that I do get hurt is because I'm not quite as flexible as I should be. Um, but there's no better time to start than now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I do try to stay super in shape. Um, but with my with my coach, he he's he's the man. He he definitely like he knows that I'm gonna keep pushing it, um, and he's right there to make sure that I kind of can push it the right way. Yeah. So it's pretty rad. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I honestly I recommend anybody <clears throat> doing like fitness stuff that goes along with their sport, especially bikes, because we really beat the shit out of our bodies. And making sure that you kind of like are ready for it is huge. Mm -hmm. um, and finding someone who can help you build the right muscle tone in the right places to help protect you for you know like the gnarly things we do like is really important. It's pretty cool. Definitely. So this is the first time I've, I've started training with him, but I've been going for a couple months, and I, aside from all the burritos, I, I do see that my muscles, <laughs> muscles are stoked, so that's good. <laughs> yeah. the, the physical activity, I think, matters more than the diet, for sure. Like, yeah, well, but you know BMX diets, it's like, <laughs> it's a pizza from 7-Eleven, like. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've had my fair share of, of cheese steaks and energy drinks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, for sure. 
I look back and I'm like, how, how did I keep all that weight off for so long? I was like, was I really pedaling that much? <laughs> Probably so. <I> it. <laughs> so, how is the the girl scene? Is there like, um, is there cliques within the girl scene, or is it kind of like one big group, or? Um, yeah, there can be. I yeah. mean, with anything. Yeah. I mean, and there's even cliques in the guys scene. Obviously, you know, you'll yeah. see, you'll see that there are women who drift more towards trails, more towards street, more towards, you know, more towards all the different disciplines of riding and mm -hmm. who they hang with is, is typically like who else rides that kind of thing. So I mean, with anything there, there's always going to be clicks yeah. and, uh, and, and we have such like a, like a melting pot of misfits that I, and I, I love this about BMX. Like I love the fact that I could be, you know, riding with someone who like works paycheck to paycheck happily lives out of a van with his dog and like rides every day he possibly can and then you've got someone who's a nurse who works more hours than they know what to do with and occasionally gets to ride their bike but shreds as soon as they do so like there's so many cool people that are within bmx and you know like i I think my favorite thing like when when someone asks me like if they're clicks like yeah you just have to find the right one you know like <laughs> Might just have to shop around a bit. And see <laughs> we all kind of fit in this in a weird way, and like we're all kind of in the same box. We're all different people, but we're gonna drift towards people that we we feel good around. Yeah. Um, but the the women's scene is building for sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I know like our our pioneers who've worked super hard, like the Ninas, you know, the ones who've like kicked ass along the way and didn't even know they were kicking ass until someone was like, hey, you know, like you're it. <laughs> <laughs> And then, you know, it's like, you can, you can choose to support it or you can choose to fight it. And I mean, I think people like, like Nina, who've made this, this so cool, like, and who've opened up their arms and their knowledge to everyone else. Like, it's pretty rad. It's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. It's pretty cool. I mean, our scene is, our scene is growing for sure. And it's, uh, it's growing in a super positive way to where we're we're finding the girls who like seriously love eating shit for fun <laughs> and, and like that's what we do and like all levels yeah, um at the end of the day but it's it. kind of yeah but it's kind of cool because now like there's more and more women so that more and more women can find these women <laughs> mm -hmm. um and like we're really lucky to have the guys that support us too like i i've been lucky to not really run into anybody who's nasty i mean i've had my my share of like a couple of people but as soon as i'm like hey man i ride you know usually they're like okay you're right i'm sorry you know, <laughs> and i don't think you're ever looking for an apology i yeah. just like i will eat as much shit as you need me to to prove that i'm still here so just accept it <laughs> yeah there's no <laughs> sense know? of getting butt hurt over any of that shit really yeah, I mean, well, I think it's, it was more so like people joking, but they don't realize like we love this mm -hmm. and we're here to, and, and I'm not one of those people that, you know, there's, there's like levels of, of women who are like, yeah, like fuck dudes, belittle the dudes. Like, I just want to ride next to you guys. That's all. Cause you teach me a lot of cool shit and that's about it. And I'm, I'm happy about that. <laughs> yeah. I don't think, I don't, I don't think that there's really any animosity these days because everybody is sick everybody actually has skills i don't think there's anybody who's like putting a bike between their legs and just taking a photo and thinking that they're going to get very far you know i think everybody's got skill to back up what they're doing like there's mm -hmm. young girls in russia doing fucking bar catch bars and random ass shit like what I know. <laughs> everybody's they are sick gnarly. yeah no it is it is definitely good to see that like if you put that bike between your legs, like, you make sure you love it as much as we do. And if you aren't sure if you love it, like, it's cool. Come on in, see what happens. But, like, this is this is what keeps us smiling yeah. and, like, alive, you know? And feel free to walk around and see if it fits you. But if it doesn't, like, don't just rep because you think it'll get you somewhere. Like, yeah. 
rep because you also enjoy it. And there's lots of different ways that you can try to enjoy it, and you might as well go for it because you never know. Mm-hmm. And I know I have so many friends who are like, nah, nah, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't think I like it, I don't think I like it. Mm-hmm. And then they pick up a bike and they're like, this is terrifying and sick, let's do it again. <laughs> Let's go! Like, <laughs> yeah, you get to be in control of your own monster truck, you know. Seriously, and your your levels of how hard you push it, and like you want to take it easy one day, you take it easy one day. Yeah. You don't want to take it easy one day, you do what you want, you know. Like, and I think once like anybody really realizes that at any age, and they pick up a bike, they're like, okay, this is cool. I can make it my own. Yeah, that's like the the pull for it, you know, the desire. Mm-hmm. Of it. Yeah, for sure. Do you have any, um, did you see a lot of video parts when you were getting into riding? Was that something that you got shown later on or anything like that? So. You've never seen one at all. Because I, I'm probably going to get shit for this. So everybody knows from like my friend group that my favorite BMX movie is the Anthem 2 movie. Oh shit! And if cool. you ask them why, it's because of the music. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then once I started watching these people ride, I was like, "Wow, this is really sick." But not until I like met them did I really understand how cool they were. But like all the Road Fools movies, I just started watching those in my office, like while I'm working, like recently. Mm-hmm. It's crazy to me because I know a lot of them. Like I knew them before I knew who they were. And I was that idiot who was so bubbly that I would like go up and heckle pros and not know who they were. <laughs> Until like the little kid runs up to you and they're like, why did you say that to so-and-so? And I'm like, what do you mean? And they're like, he's, he's like X Games. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, oh, okay, well, hopefully I didn't make a bad impression. I'm just joking, you know? And like, I'm not, I'm not mean or malicious or anything, but like, I like to laugh, you know? Mm. Um, so now I'm finally starting to catch back up on the movies. And a lot of, like, places that we go to, the guys will kind of sit me down and show me clips of where it is or, like, what people have done there, which is pretty cool. Like, I have a solid crew that, like, half heckles me for not knowing video parts and half is like, okay, but you actually got to watch it. Like, let's go. And and what's even funnier is tomorrow, tomorrow's Thursday yeah <laughs> yeah tomorrow so tomorrow i get to see rad for the first time <laughs> oh shit the original rad <laughs> yeah nice. they're they're doing like a premiere on the island here and a whole bunch of um the the trail guys out here are gonna go see it and i'm going with them so pretty pretty excited about that but oh. like that kind of just goes to show like how backwards bmx has been for me and although like i don't really know all the history i'm learning but i love it yeah <laughs> I definitely love it. <laughs> Are they playing on a movie theater uh, screen? Wow, yeah. that's really cool. Yeah, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Like, no better way than to watch it like that, right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Sick. Um, well, is there anything else you want to talk about? I think I've gone. I'm going through most of my list here. I'm trying to think of anything else. Um. No, I mean, I'm just. I'm. I'm hyped people are excited to like hear my story and why I started riding and I'm I'm stoked to learn other people's stories and I, I I love our community. We have the coolest, like like I said, the most misfit community. Yeah. And you never know what someone's gonna come to you and be like, Well, this is what I do for work. And you're like, <laughs> you're kidding. Well, we ride with someone who's a rocket scientist. Holy shit. Nuts. I'm like, this is the coolest thing. Like but everybody gets in the woods or everyone gets to the skate park or, you know, like meets at the curb and like everyone's just human on a bike. Yeah. And I'm pumped because my job is now coordinating that too. And I found a bike job, which is even sicker. Like I work for a company called down to ride and it connects riders to rides. And it, it it's, it's more of a tool for like road biking, mountain biking, you know, where you kind of like, start at point A and end up at point B Mm -hmm. and it's kind of like a a scheduling tool per se kind of like nixes out all the bullshit of like trying to find the event trying to text all your friends to see where you're riding that kind of thing I'm the wild card with BMX like I'm supposed to figure out how we fit into that and I keep telling the guys I'm like we sesh we don't we don't do a ride out like it's not a group ride it's a session like 
we meet somewhere we usually hang there and then we get bored and we go somewhere else yeah <laughs> so i get to kind of figure out that side but the fact that i just found a job working in bikes and i get to travel and see places like like sea otter classic in cali like really cool and and i work from home so if i am injured let me knock on i already know i'm injured so i can't really <laughs> knock on wood before, but i'm okay like i still have a job yeah it's really cool um and it's like it's like like a shoulder nudge like a, just don't do that again idiot like it's not like i'm not yelled at it's not gonna affect anything in any way like maybe i'll have a harder time getting on and off the plane but it is what it is yeah yeah <laughs> but yeah, so I'm like, I'm I'm just super hyped that everything is like kind of coming all together, and I I can work in bikes, I can ride bikes, and I can still separate the two so that they both don't feel like jobs. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm uh, I'm not mad about that. <laughs> That's awesome. That's good to hear. It's 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 so cool to hear about people progressing and kind of like getting their you know sinking their teeth into it, you know, and turning it into something even better. Yeah. Well, and it, I. I love my friends to death, but they were like, hey, don't don't expect to make any money in this. And, mm -hmm. you know, like, I've kind of gotten lucky to where I've gathered, like, a, a handful of core sponsors that support me in any way they can and help me with the hype and show me all the love. And, and you know, I'm not, I'm not, like, a pro rider. I'm not really getting paid to ride. But I have, like, such a cool support system behind me that's really sick that... I never thought that could be a thing because mm -hmm. I always thought I would just like be riding bikes and you know I was told like the sponsor life the the pro life or the working in bikes life was hard and I'm like slowly figuring out how to work around that which is wild to me and I'm like super humbled by the fact that people even saw something in me to pull me onto their teams um and then do right. continue to support me as hard as they do but and then finding a job in bikes has been gnarly and I don't think I'm ever going to go pro. So I can't, I can't, I can't say that box will be checked off, but <laughs> if it ever happens, it'd be cool. Yeah. But I mean, I'm really happy with how things are going right now. And like, I'm just stoked on more bikes. <laughs> yeah. The sky's the limit. Cause honestly, there's no, there's no end goal for progression and people progress is at any speed and there's, you know, there's no definitive answer to that shit. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> it's cool. The scary what ifs. I like them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, who are the sponsors that are um, that are hooking you <laughs> up? If you feel like uh, shouting them out. Yeah. So, um, my pad company and my joint support, which support, which is like massively important right now, is uh, Old Bones Therapy. I just signed a whole bunch of posters and I'll be on the wall at the Wahoo's Fish Tacos in Cali and a couple other places. So that's pretty rad. Cool. Um, yeah. And then I, I ride for a coffee company called Coffee Serve Co. Um, They're like my hype squad out in New Jersey. Old Bones is based in California, mm -hmm. um, which has like a gnarly team. Coffee Serve has a gnarly team. Um, I ride for Everyone Sex But Us, who's become like my my go-to hype squad for when I'm like having an absolute meltdown I'm like hey Ken I need you help <laughs> and he's like I don't know how to help you but I'm gonna tell you you're rad and like that's enough <laughs> <laughs> and I have um a, a CBD company which I was super skeptical of the CBD at first but that's been the lifesaver with like mental stuff and then physical stuff um called Alpen, Alpen Organics mm -hmm. um they've been the coolest to me I've got, you know, some, some little ones here and there that are super helpful and like hypish, but um, then I also ride, I was riding for a supplement company called um, Black Magic, and it was Black Magic Supply, protein powders, pre-workouts, that kind of thing, you know, the gym, the gym was calling, um, but I switched over to their sibling brand, which much more fits my vibe of very loud and excited. Um, and I'm stoked because I love all their products. I loved all the black magic, but the flavors of these new products are amazing. Um, so mm. they, they're pretty cool too. Like they help me out like crazy. They send me supplements every month and kind of keep me going. Um, what's that yeah. sister brand called? Myo blocks. Myo blocks. Yeah. 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 So if you need any, any supplements and got any questions, I can help you direct you to which flavors you should, you should try. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Actually, um, this one is, it's not so I don't know if you've ever had greens or not, but I try to take greens every morning. Um, I'm not good at remembering to take them every morning, but this is by far like probably the best greens I've ever tasted. They don't taste like chalk. 
Mm. And that's like apparently for whatever reason really hard to do for companies to not make them taste chalky because of how greens are made. They kind of just like compress and dry out into a chalk consistency. Right. Wow. But this one is like I can drink it and I can get through it and I like it. Huh. And so it was just huge for me. But yeah. That does sound cool. So, I'll have to check it out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and then the other company that recently just picked me on um, is Union Square Shoes, which is pretty gnarly. Right Actually, on. yeah, they asked me at a jam, and I learned a jump line in their shoes. So you know that <laughs> <laughs> you know that they're solid because I I am a squirrel in anything, and as long as my feet stay on the pedals, like I'm I'm solid. <laughs> oh. Yeah. yeah. So it's all the good stuff, you know. Oh yeah. Well. um as with every episode where I have a guest, I like to let them pick like an outro track. Uh, what's a what's a song you'd like to play for the outro? Oh, Kickstart My Heart for sure. That's my favorite song. Who's that by Motley Crue? Oh yeah. Okay. Cool. Oh yeah. That song. You put that song on, and there's a. I'm going to enter whatever contest is happening. Like. <laughs> did, did anyone tell you that there's a bike a bike video part with that song? No. Okay, I I love bike videos. I that's kind of where I came from. But um, can you send it to me? Yeah, it's Joe Simon's mutiny subversion video part. I'm sure it's online. I'll find it and send it to you. Please, if not, remind me because I, I don't remember that. If it's not Joe Simon, then it's Walter Perringer. One of those two. But I it, love this guy. But it's like a, a video part. It gets you all hyped. It's like yeah, so. Yep, yep, that's exactly why I love that song. Oh, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> we'll use that for sure. Hell yeah, cool. Well, thanks for taking that. the time to do that, uh, to have this conversation and shoot the shit. Hell yeah, thank you for having me and no kick problem. ass. And thank you for being patient with me and trying to schedule this. I've been a space cadet. No worries, <laughs> we're all there. <laughs> Red, all right, well, have a good rest of your night. You too, take care. Thanks, bye